it is Oishi. This is a video. Reading rush is a thing. And I decided I'm gonna do it really quickly. Here are the books that I'm gonna read for Reading Rush. So the first challenge is to read a book with purple on its cover and I have chosen How Far We Go and How Fast by Nora Dector. This is a book about a girl whose life really revolves around music and her brother is a big part of that too. And I think one day her brother leaves and she's left to sort of navigate her life by herself. That one's really cool. It's also, doesn't look that long of a book. So it seems like the perfect fit for this challenge and also, Yes, that is purple. The next challenge is to read a book in the same spot for the entire time, and for that I have gone with Cinder by Marissa Meyer. Now, I didn't originally decide to pick this up again, um, because I have read this series before, but there's another challenge on the list that this falls into as well, so I thought, eh, why not? Why not give it a reread? I'm combining the next two challenges, which is to read a book you meant to read last year and to read an author's first book. And for that, I'm going with The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This book absolutely blew up, like, last year, and I've been meaning to read it, just haven't gotten around to it. And it was also Angie Thomas's debut novel. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a read. It's a little bit longer than is ideal for a readathon. Hey. Challenge accepted. When I saw the challenge read a book that you meant to read last year, I immediately thought, oh, you mean everything on my damn shelf? The next challenge is to read a book with five or more words in the title, and for that I have gone with The Invention of Hugo Cabaret by Brian Selznick. I picked this book for a couple of reasons. A, because five or more words in the title, and B, because it's told through words and pictures, so it'll be like a really fast read. And plus, I just, I've missed this book. I haven't reread it in a while, and I just think it's time. And the last challenge is to read and watch a book to movie adaptation, which I have gone with Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling. I just feel like reading this again, and plus it's one of the easiest book to movie adaptations to do. It's not a long book. I've read it so many times that I can basically just recite it from memory. And I just I just really want to revisit the world. So I'm thinking the ninth reread, that'll be fun. I'm actually gonna be audiobooking this as well. I recently borrowed the audiobook from like my online library. So it'll be fun because I've never um, listened to it before, so I'm excited. Okay, on to the reading. Hello, it's Tuesday. I didn't end up filming a lot yesterday, but the phone's ringing. But who's gonna get that? It's the landline. No one answers the landline anymore. I didn't film a lot yesterday, but I did get about two hours into the Philosopher's Stone audiobook. Wait, first of all, um, it's the Sorcerer's Stone audiobook, which is already pissing me off because it's not Sorcerer's Stone, it's Philosopher's Stone. Get it right. And also, they changed certain things in the book. For example, when Dumbledore offers McGonagall a sherbet lemon, that, yeah, that iconic line, they changed it to lemon drop. No, everyone knows it's sherbet lemon. You can't just go and change it. Wait, do Americans just not know that the original candy is a sherbet lemon? Like, have the, whoa. Wait, because that's the whole reason they changed Philosopher to Sorcerer, so that, like, Americans would understand it better. But what if an American's never read the British edition? They're missing out on the glory that is a sherbet lemon. What a revelation. Yeah, that pissed me off. Also, I feel like the line, you're a wizard, Harry, is so iconic that I totally forgot in the books that it's Harry, you're a wizard. So when they said that, I was like, wait, did they change that too? But then I looked and it actually said, Harry, you're a wizard. And I'm like, damn, one of the most iconic lines of the series is not even in the books. <sighs> Love that. I'm almost 100 pages into the book. I'm on chapter seven, The Sorting Hat, and they're just about to get sorted. So I'm excited to keep reading. I also want to pick up one of the other books um, so I can do some multitasking, multi-reading, if you will. I'm already doing a lot of multi-reading because I'm reading A Little Life, which I stopped um, to do the reading rush. I'm also borrowed... I also borrowed um, The Anatomy of Story by John Truby because apparently it's really great. It's also, I'm pretty sure, one of my first nonfiction books that I've ever picked up. I picked up The Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. It's over there. Um, like a while ago, but I put it down. Just, I wasn't in the mood. So yeah, 
love getting that nonfiction in there. And I also have two more books from the library, which I have not started yet. Um, one of them is Boy Meets Boy by David Levithan, and the other one is We Are the Ants um, by someone whose name I cannot read on the book right now because you girl can't see. Yeah, so a lot of multitasking, multi-reading going on, but what you gonna do? Sometimes you gotta. New students said the fat friar, smiling around at them. <laughs> About to be sorted, I suppose. A few people nodded mutely. Hope to see you in Hufflepuff, said the friar. <sighs> I just did a fat lower body workout, and now it's hard to move. So, I'm just gonna toss that there, sit here, and watch cat creature because um she's in Toronto so I'm gonna go meet her today with my sister um and also start reading Hugo Cabaret and continue listening to Harry Potter Date. I am 190 pages into Hugo on chapter 9. Um, it's a really fast read, mostly because uh, there's a lot of pictures, so it's been going good. Also, I have decided that I'm going to switch around the challenges a bit. So, for the challenge where you have to read a book in one spot the whole time, I've decided I'm gonna do that with Hugo. And so, Cinder is gonna just be for the reading a book with the non-human main character, which I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. But yeah, that's the challenge that I chose Cinder for. And so now, um, Hugo is for five or more words and also in the same spot. I'm also like, as I'm reading this, I'm just wanting to rewatch the movie for this because the movie was so good, but I already am doing Harry Potter for the adaptation. So maybe I'll just end up watching it anyway, just for fun because I love it so much. I'm enjoying it, like usual. I mean, it's one of my favorite children's books ever. It's four o'clock. I'm gonna go take a shower now um, because in a little over two hours, I need to head out for downtown. I would say good morning, but it's almost noon, so I won't. <laughs> Last night was so much fun. We hung out with Annabelle for a while, and she's just the sweetest, most precious, pure human being ever. We met up with her at her last stop, which was a little cafe, and then we went to a park nearby, and it was like a group of 13 of us. It was really fun. We took a bunch of photos, talked. It was just, she was just so great. So thanks, Annabelle, for having us. <laughs> I'm working on crocheting a little throw for my friend, um, so I'm gonna get to work on that and put uh, my Philosopher's Stone audiobook on, except it's Sorcerer's Stone and they keep saying Sorcerer's Stone and it's pissing me off, but we take what we can get. But a moment later, the reflection smiled at him. It put its hand into its pocket and pulled out a blood red stone. It winked and put the stone back in its pocket, and as it did so, Harry felt something heavy drop into his real pocket. Somehow, incredibly, he'd gotten the stone. Well, said Quirrell impatiently, what do you see? Harry screwed up his courage. I see myself shaking hands with Dumbledore, he invented. I, I've won the house cup for Gryffindor. Quirrell cursed again. 
Get out of the way, he said. As Harry moved aside, he felt the sorcerer's stone against his leg. Dare he make a break for it? But he hadn't walked five paces before a high voice spoke, though Quirrell wasn't moving his lips. He lies! He lies! Potter, come back here, Quirrell shouted. Tell me the truth. What did you just see? The high voice spoke again. Let me speak to him face to face. Master, you are not strong enough. I have strength enough for this. Harry felt as if Devil's Snare was rooting him to the spot. He couldn't move a muscle. Petrified, he watched as Quirrell reached up and began to unwrap his turban. What was going on? The turban fell away. Quirrell's head looked strangely small without it. Then he turned slowly on the spot. Harry would have screamed, but he couldn't make a sound. Where there should have been a back to Quirrell's head, there was a face, the most terrible face Harry had ever seen. It was chalk white with glaring red eyes and slits for nostrils like a snake. Harry Potter. Harry hung back for a last word with Ron and Hermione. See you over the summer then. Hope you have a, a good holiday, said Hermione, looking uncertainly after Uncle Vernon, shocked that anyone could be so unpleasant. Oh, I will, said Harry, and they were surprised at the grin that was spreading over his face. They don't know we're not allowed to use magic at home. I'm going to have a lot of fun with Dudley this summer. All right, I finished it, and it was great as usual. I mean, what do you expect? It's Harry Potter. Um, okay, save that. And now I think I'm going to watch the movie just so I can finish up with this challenge once and for all. Also, I've gotten pretty far with my little throw. Um, I'm gonna keep going as I watch the movie. Netflix only has movies five through eight, and we do have all the DVDs, but my computer doesn't have a CD slot, um, and I don't want to go downstairs and watch it on the TV, so I guess illegally it is. Right.